Hello and welcome to episode 72 of Ready to Mosh. I'm Kev P and alongside me as always is the transistor to my twisted, it's Gem G. Wow, that's a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, got through it though. You did well done, I wouldn't have. <laughs> not backwards anyway, I could say twisted transistor but I don't think I could do it the other way around. I'm not going to try. Well, mix it up a little. So this episode we are covering the Nottingham Metal to the Masses final at the old cold store. So we'll get into that later on. But first, before that, we've got a review. Seems a while since we've done a review, doesn't it? Yeah, it, this is almost a normal episode. Almost. We're kind of almost getting back to normal and then we'll have another festival for you. Yeah, so it's all a little bit screwy at the moment, but we're, this one's a hybrid, I'd say. Yeah. yeah, we like to mix it up, don't we? We yeah. don't have a set pattern every week. Although everything has to be festivals. But... Yeah. So I can't remember when. It's that time of year, isn't it? It is, yeah. Not a bad thing. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, it could be a lot worse. But there obviously are some reviews that we've missed out on or new releases that we've not mentioned. So we are going to have a catch-up on that in a few weeks, hopefully, anyway. Yeah, try and blast through some of the bigger kind of releases. We have missed a lot. But this is one that, well, as we speak, it's released tomorrow. And we've been sent a pre-release copy of it. So we wanted to make sure that we got this one Definitely included in an episode in a timely fashion. Yeah. And the review that we're going to do today is by Callous Hands. It's their new EP called Trapped in Animated Flesh. What a cracking title, that is. It's a lovely title, yeah. So it's five-track EP. Actually quite long for an EP, although it's only five tracks. There's some long ones on there. Yeah, like the first track's, what, seven, eight minutes long? Yeah. I think the whole thing's about 25, 26 minutes roughly, maybe a little bit longer. Shall I just go into a bit about Callisans first, actually? Yeah. To introduce them, because they are a relatively small bands, so you may not be familiar with them, but you should be. They're a five-piece from Coventry, and they've been around since around 2018, I think. Yeah. They've been together a, a few years now. This is their second EP. Their debut EP was called Earth Mover. They um, got to the 2019 Metal to the Masses final. 2022, they actually finished Runner Up and got to play the new Blood Stage at Bloodstock. So th- there may be some people out there who've seen them at Bloodstock. Yeah, we didn't catch them last year for some reason. Because it was that hot and so we, the, we, the, the tent was just ridiculously yeah, hot. Yeah, it was. It was an effort to get that far, wasn't it? So let's crack on and start with track one. The cycle remains. As we've already mentioned, this is a long track, just under eight minutes. Yeah. But it doesn't feel a long track. It doesn't feel eight minutes, mm. but I don't think it needed to be eight minutes. If you know what I mean, I think they could have cut it off about five, six minutes. Okay. Not that, I mean, not that it's a, a bad track. It's actually, I really like it because it's got a great kind of, almost like a horror film kind of start to it. Yeah, I was going to say, I really like the intro. It's really slow and eerie, builds up and then suddenly just kicks in and slaps you around the face with noise. Yeah, it's, it's kind of slightly disjointed at first as mm. well. Like the guitar's kind of almost like detuned in places. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. And this one actually felt quite behemoth-like mm. to me. Yeah, it was yeah, I like, got you that. Know, the, the screeching and the the uh, ground and vocals. Like I said, before it kicks off at a real fast pace. But yeah, but it's a good opening track. Very good opening track. Yeah. kind of sets it up for I guess it really sets the get. tone for the rest yeah. of the EP, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And then track two is Suffocate. Slightly short, this one just under four minutes. This is... Just a brutal onslaught from the beginning, really. Kicks in heavy to start with. Really strong vocals again coming through with it. And some really great guitar work in this one. Some really cool solos going through. Yeah, I actually thought this kind of, as a pace kind of thing, this was actually a little bit slower. Mm. It starts faster than yeah. the, the first track, but is the overall pace mm. felt a little bit slower than the first one. Yeah, and again, a little bit disjointed in that way, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it, feel, it feels actually quite more drum-driven in this mm-hmm. for me. And there's a lot, like you said about the vocals, like really heavy, guttural kind of growling going mm-hmm. on. And it's, yeah, it's a good follow-on from track one. Moving on then, track three, The Great Unknown. I think this is probably my one of my favourite. I've got two favourites, actually. This one initially, but then... There's another one. I know. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> because you? I think, yeah, because I've got two favourites on this. Yeah. And this is this was my first favourite until the other one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, again, it's similar to the first track and it's got quite a soft and melodic opening and then slaps you in the face with an onslaught of noise. Again. Again. Yeah, it is a really kind of like soft intro. 
it almost kind of like does the track one and track two kind of for me mirrored track three and track four in kind of like the style mm, yeah and yeah so this one again yeah complete change of pace once it kicks in and it sort of i felt like this one is kind of like driven by all the different components mm. so like you know the guitar bass yeah. drum uh vocal everything kind of works in cohesion on this one yeah, I felt like it just had loads of different layers, but they do all work together. Yeah. But you can detect the different kind of layers within it, if that makes sense. Yeah, some of the best vocals on this as well mm. for me. Yeah, really strong, vicious. Uh, yeah, so th- this was my favourite track up to this point. There's some really good kind of like simple sort of, it almost seems quite simple, it's probably not, but it's kind of like simple sort of fuzzy chords. Mm. But then it gets interspersed into kind of real technical, clean guitar solos and drums. Mm, so yeah. you've got a complete mixture of things, but it all works as one. Yeah, that's what I was trying to yeah. say with the different layers that go through it. Yeah. They're kind of separate, but they just blend really well. Mm. And that's the latest single, this one, isn't it? That they've just it is, released yeah. a video for that one. Then on to track four, which is called Trapped. And this one, listening back to this a little bit earlier, this reminded me of Fear Factory. Yeah, we were which I'd not, think, I'd not we picked up it? on before. It was kind of bugging me. What it? It's not Fear Factory all the way through, but there are definite hints of Fear mm. Factory in places. Yeah, I got that as well because like we'd both listened to it separately and just watched the video for this one, which was the the first single they released off it. Yeah, and yeah, Fear Factory. I think was the the thing I was trying to think. The what overriding like. thing, yeah. yeah. And again, it's a slightly different pace to the last one. Mm. So kind of like what I was saying about the one and two and then three and four doing the same thing. And it's, it feels a little bit more toned back on this and kind of like more emphasis on the bass. Yeah, I got that as well. It's stompy, that kind of like stompy like rhythm that goes through it. Yeah. This is my other favourite one, by the way. Oh, right, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's not the one I thought it was going to oh. be. Yeah, and then it's got quite a faster paced chorus Really visceral again with the vocals, and I really love some of the guitar work through this one. I think it works really well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this it all kind of like builds up to a crescendo, doesn't it? Mm. Um, I think I wrote something like animalistic pain. It just kind of like, you know, how yeah. it really kind of goes to you. And, yeah, really delivers. And it actually ends really well with kind of like the sudden stop. Mm. It's kind of like yeah. a hard stop right at the end. Yeah. Yeah, you're kind of not quite expecting it. Yeah, it just kind of comes from nowhere. Yeah. You're like, oh, wow, okay. Similar that was track four, yeah. Yeah, in a similar way to like the tracks one and three where they start all melodic and then just slap you around with the noise when they kick in. It's a similar... Yeah. Yeah, lots of unexpected moments through the... Mm. And then final track is Fractured World. Yeah, which is my favourite. Which I'm assuming it would have been. It would have, yeah. I, I, that's when I thought one, it. Yeah, yeah I, I thought that was going to be the one... I thought it was going to be uh, track three and track five for you. Um, no, I am a big fan of this track, though, I have to mm. say. But the other two, I just got a little bit on it. Okay. Yeah, again, faster pace than the last one. And it feels like it's almost like a race to the finish. Yeah. You know, kind of like how frantic it is. Yeah, I put frenetic was my word I'd got for it. Okay. But again, it's in a way that kind of showcases all of the individual components mm. and shows that how they kind of work with each other, if you know what I mean. So yeah. that there's so many different things going on, but it doesn't feel like there's a million things going on. It feels like yeah. every it feels very natural. Yeah, the same. I felt we've got really great layers going throughout it and quite a mixture of tempo at times, but when it gets faster it's quite chaotic, but in a good way. Yeah. It's it, it does mix kind of like the pace really, really well. And it's got a great chorus. I was gonna say I love the chorus, I wrote that. Yeah. Yeah, for me, th- this is the perfect end to it because mm-hmm. it is a great track to finish on. Yeah. Really, really strong. So what's your mark out of 10 on this one? I'm going to say 8. I was going to say 8 as well. Mm, both enjoying it. Very much so. So yeah, that is Callous Hand's latest EP, Trapped in Animated Flesh. Go and give it a listen, it's out now. Right, 
Right, on to the final of the Nottingham Metal to the Masses heat then, which we went to last night. Just to preface this by saying this may be slight, well, it will be slightly shorter than we would have intended because there was an incident and the whole event ended abruptly sooner than planned, but we'll get on to that as we get there. So as we said, this was at the Old Coal Store, which is part of Castle Rock Brewery. We went there last year for Mangata, so it's a nice little venue. Yeah, so yeah, it's a cool little venue. Yeah, yeah. Unlike its name, it was very hot. It wasn't cold. No, it was very humid, but it wasn't very humid last (laughs) night. But yeah, I think it was a good choice of venue for the event. It worked well. Yeah, you actually thought at first it was really dead, didn't you? Yeah, it felt empty, but I think just because the heats and the semis that we'd had at the tap were so busy because of the shape of the tap and tumbler where the stage is. We've said this before, it's really awkward to watch bands there, as well as being a good venue to watch bands in it's just yeah because it, it's very it, well it's a small very very small venue and quite narrow and there's posts in the way and yeah whereas this one is completely different yeah it's almost i feel it's almost like being in the back of a trailer it is a bit like that isn't it it's quite low ceiling yeah low ceiling and it's got almost kind of an l shape yeah but when you're watching the band the stage is kind of like in front of you yeah and it is what it does feel like a trailer then with the bar to the right hand side mm. Yeah, it does, I guess. And because the stage is raised as well, you tend to get a generally good view, as long as someone doesn't stand straight in front of you. Straight in front of you, yeah. But that happens anyway, doesn't it? So, you know, you just move if you can. So there were four bands in the final, and then last year's Nottingham winner, Drickford Empire, were due to headline the event while the judges were making their minds up. The order of running for the bands was decided on the day. Yeah, I think it was just drawn out of a hat, wasn't it? Yeah, which is standard, I guess. So the four bands in the running to get a place at Bloodstock on the new Blood stage were 13th Sign, Buried by My Heartache, Dead Demons and Beyond Your Design. And that's the running order that they were playing in. Yeah. So first up then were 13th Sign. Out of the four, these were the ones that we were least familiar with. Yeah, I didn't really know a lot about 13th Sign. No, in terms of the others, Dead Demons we hadn't seen live before, but we did recommend them back in probably about January, February, I think, when they won their heat. We came across them then. And we saw Buried by My Heartache and Beyond Your Design in their semi-final. And we'd seen Buried by My Heartache before in their heat and also at Mangata last year. So we were... Very familiar. Yeah. So 13th sign then, what did you think? I thought the the lead singer was quite imposing. Yeah. I thought he had quite a good good presence. Mm. It just felt like he loomed over everybody. Yeah. But that was kind of like in contrast to the rest of the band who kind of looked like they'd just finished um, work for the day in IT. Yeah. (laughs) Which, yeah, you know, I'm mad at them. It's just that's, that's kind yeah. of like, it was very contrasting yeah. appearance styles. Yeah, so I guess how they came across visually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked the vocals. They mm. were really impressive. Yeah. Lots of growling. There were sound issues through the night. Yeah. A lot of people said exactly the same things as mm. us. And with some of the stuff, it felt like, for me, the guitar just was kind of lost a little bit. Mm. And but the bass came through well, but the drums seemed too light. You think I thought drums came across quite well? Really? Yeah. Yeah, they just didn't. I feel like they needed to be fuller. They they just seemed a little tinny compared to what I would have expected. Okay. With the sound issues that they had at the start, I think it really improved at the halfway point. Yeah, they it's did. It's like pick something up, changed. Yeah. The, I mean, the pace of the stuff changed. It sounded it sounded like the whatever audio issues there were had kind of been resolved at the halfway point. Yeah, I also felt that they got better as they went along. I think it was always going to be difficult for whoever was on first because the crowd aren't warmed up. Yeah. you're Although the sound checked, you're going to be potentially more likely to encounter sound issues Yeah, as well. So it was always going to be the difficult spot. But yeah, I thought they kind of, at first I wasn't sure, but as they went on, I really warmed to them and I really enjoyed them, their sound, their overall presence. And they did seem like they could be a blood salt band. Yeah, sound-wise, they reminded me of Creator, I got some hints of, exodus in there yeah. as well that kind of old school melodic kind of thrash. Kind of thrash yeah yeah which i really like i'm kind of wishing i'd listened to more of them beforehand <laughs> but it was a nice surprise because i didn't know what to expect from them at all yeah i thought they were good they got they did get better as they went on mm. it was just kind of unfortunate they had the issues right at the start yeah Next up were Buried by My Heartache, who we are very, very familiar with, listen to them a lot. Again, more more sound issues. Yeah, they seem to have a delay with their intro being played. That put them back a couple of minutes. And then once they started, the vocals weren't coming through. No. So there was no vocals coming through at all. Everything else sounded fine. Yeah. But for did. whatever reason, it's like the mic wasn't turned up. It's weird because we were there while they were just doing the last minute checks on it. But... And it sounded okay. Yeah. yeah. And then once they started playing, there was no audio for the first one maybe two songs 
Definitely the first one, yeah. yeah. I can't remember what well, suddenly it did come through, but Yeah, which was and once I got going they sounded they sounded absolutely fine. Yeah. But it was again terrible work on sound, which wasn't their fault, but they managed to get there in the end. Yeah, it just shows their professionalism as a band that they just kind of carried on and went with it and it didn't seem to put them off or phase them. No, it didn't phase them at all, did no, it? They, they just carried they just on. Got on with the job. Yeah. There was a much more bigger crowd interaction. I was just going to say that. And like, reaction as well. Yeah, and presence as well. There's definitely more in there. Yeah. But they have got quite a big following, like we said, in the semi final. And you, you could tell the difference when mm. they were playing. Yeah. There was a huge difference in the crowd size. It was a lot busier. After the first kind of song that didn't really work out. They absolutely stepped up. Once everything was at the right level, it was spot on. There was some really great shredding on the guitars kind of like halfway yeah. through. Really cool solos. And they even had to, because of the issues with the intro at the beginning, they actually ended up finishing later than they were originally supposed to. Yeah, which is good because they obviously didn't get cut off. They had their full half an hour. and Yeah, they kind of made sure they fine. were going to get the full the full allotted time. Yeah, and that, again, that wasn't them trying to overrun yeah, I just thought it was an overall awesome performance from them. Probably the best I've seen them, despite the sound issues at the start. Just seeing them on that bigger, on stage, bigger stage again, which is where we saw them at yeah. Mangata. But yeah, yeah. It, it worked better, didn't it? Yeah. They, the bigger the environment, the better they play. Yeah, I and think. it shows how how much they've kind of grown over the last year since we last saw them as well on that stage. Yeah, they've, they've come on a long way in that yeah. those last twelve months. They were excellent. Yeah, I think there's really a lot more we can say about them no. that we've not said already. We've not really. said already. Yeah. Yeah. Third band up then were Dead Demons, who, like we said, we did recommend them a few months ago after their heat. I've really enjoyed listening to them prior to getting the live experience yeah. and didn't disappoint. No, they didn't. I, I actually think these were the most technically proficient band mm. we saw all night. Yeah, especially the guitar work that they yeah. got. That was another level. Yeah, the guitar playing skills were second to none all night. Drums, fantastic. Everything sounded clearer. Mm. It, it was the clearest it had it been all night, I think. Yeah, I think. I don't know whether they'd done something with the sound between bands there, but yeah, it seemed to pick up from there from a general perspective. Yeah, sound wise, I mean, these are proper kind of old school, like early maiden priest, that kind of yeah. metal, and I really love that. Yeah, there wasn't much of a crowd for these, actually. No, it was weird because it did pick up for Buried by My Heartache, and I didn't know if it was kind of generally more people coming in or whether it was specifically to watch them i didn't know if it would stay that level hmm. but it was clearly the buried by my heartache fans had disappeared a bit at yeah. that point but i think the crowd they were they had they worked with really well they did and there was definitely some obviously fans there that were really into it and participating and yeah. enjoying it well like i say the, these are probably the most accomplished musicians out mm. of all of the bands we saw yeah. But I don't know if Bloodstock is the right place. I kind of know what you mean. In a way, they w I think they would fit in. They wouldn't look out of place. No. As far as a new blood kind of thing goes, it's not what I'd expect to see. Whereas I think if they, I don't know, if they opened at Stone Dead, yeah, they, they would go oh, yeah. down at absolute storm. That, yeah. that is the place they need to play. Yeah, I don't know if they went into the poll this year or if it's something they've done before, I don't know. But yeah, they would definitely fit well on that stage. But I could see them on Bloodstock as well. And I, th I think just in comparison to the other bands, though, it was a very different style. Mm. And In fact, I'd probably say all of the bands almost had their own kind of identity in that I, respect. I was going to say that at some point. It's, it was good because each band was was different, had its own style. It wasn't like you were just watching four metalcore bands or something like that. Yeah, or that, four thrash bands. Or... Which, you know, could happen, fair enough. But no, there were four very different bands. Yeah. And I think that's what would make it harder to pick from if there were four bands in the same style you kind of judge on how they were approaching yeah it, if you know what i mean i know what you mean but yeah they were great really glad i've seen them live absolutely would watch them again yeah same here yeah i'd like to see them again next up were beyond your design who had the longest sound check all night they seem to yeah i don't know why it took so long i think they probably had more to check with their stage set up and they got their lights set up and they got so like it did kind of seem unfavorably stacked for them in certain aspects, mm. you know, because they got the lights going, they yeah. got a longer sound check. I don't think they necessarily got more things to check. It just seems that more time was taken, which is not necessarily them. It could be the sound deck. Yeah, I think it could have been. I mean, they had their own light set up in the tap, didn't we? We mentioned yeah. when they did their semi-final that, yeah, they'd got that whole stage presence kind of already built up a better yeah. set up. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. yeah. And the crowd was really big. Yeah, it was probably slightly bigger than the Berry Rama Heart 8 yes. crowd, I would say. But again, I was expecting that just because of the crowd that they had at the semi-final. Mm. And again, they're quite an established 
localish band and yeah. they've got quite a strong fan base so yeah i did expect a big crowd for them yeah and i think out of all of the bands these are kind of the band i'd have expected to see on the new blood stage yeah i think not necessarily the one i if it was a public vote not necessarily the one i would have voted for but as a bloodstock band they are closer to what you'd probably expect to see i mean like we said again with the semi-final the kind of the stage presence that they've got and the way they come across right from the opening that they do yeah it's almost like they're already playing on that big stage yeah they're all you know almost like they've already made that step up so i think i'm trying to think how many tracks they played i think they were part way through the fourth yeah so they've probably still got about 10 minutes left yeah i think they were about halfway through roughly and then the power went off on stage and to be honest because there's been sound issues before and even when we were there from Angarsa there were sound issues weren't there and yeah I think was it when we were watching Replica Jesus their sound cut out yeah so I didn't think anything of it until I realised a fire alarm was going off and then we all had to get evacuated yeah the band told us we had to go to, through the fire exit and at this point it was throwing it down with rain which you knew because you'd just nipped to the toilets hadn't yeah. you just before and um, it, it wasn't threat, it was biblical. It was biblical. To be fair, nipped outside between bands anyway just to get some fresh air because it was hot, wasn't it? Yeah. And the last time we went out, it was just starting it to spit. It was just spit, starting to spit, yeah. And it was starting to lighten in the distance. Yes, there was fault lightning, wasn't there? Yeah. A little optimistic me was like, oh, we had that at download and it didn't touch us, so it'll be fine. And the heavens opened. Basically, the building flooded. I wasn't aware of how bad it was. I just thought the power had tripped because of the lightning initially. Yeah. And it was only when we were talking to people after and I've seen some footage on Instagram after the actual, the backstage area was flooded all around the merch desk because we were talking to Buried by My Heartache afterwards. Yeah. We? And they said water was just developing around where they got their merch set up. Yeah. But because of where we were stood, we couldn't see all this. All we saw was the stage go. Yeah. So I spoke to a few people who were telling me how bad it was. So as you said, there was Buried yeah. by My Heartache. I also spoke to the lead singer of 13th Signs. Yeah. Um, he'd got a really expensive mic and he was mm. really worried about that. Yeah. And I was also talking to Drip Fed Empire. And again, they told me it just literally just flooded. Yeah. So hopefully there wasn't too much damage to anyone's equipment. Yeah. Especially that's for a, small bands. That's, yeah. That would be awful. And I don't know what insurance would be there, but, you know, hopefully nothing got too damaged. But yeah, we were kind of stood outside for a good five, ten minutes. Oh, at least, yeah. Trying to shelter at the side of the building, the front bit. I've got an outside area which had like a gazebo, but that was rammed. Yeah, some you know, people were sheltering under trees, which isn't advisable when it's lightning. No, not the brightest idea in the world. No, you kindly gave me your battle jacket to shelter my hair a little bit. I did, yeah. But at least we had some pints, which were getting fuller. Yeah, the, they, we were, they were there. filling up as we were drinking them. <laughs> but yeah, eventually we got that back in. Everyone was just milling around. Obviously, everyone went straight to the bar, so that was busy. Yeah, no one really knew what was going on. And I don't even know if the organisers at that point, they'd obviously have to decide what to do, but it was unsafe for anyone to go back into the old coal store area or for it to continue. Yeah, so a couple of sources had told me that basically it was going to have to be redone again mm. and the whole thing was going to have to be rescheduled. Obviously, that made us very difficult to do. Mm. So I assumed that was going to be the case. However, they decided it wasn't going to be rescheduled and that they were going to announce the results that night. Yeah, I mean, we were at the point where we just didn't think anything was going to be announced, so we yeah. decided to leave. Yeah, so we, yeah, we got a cab home, yeah. And then we saw when we got home that they, they thought that they'd seen enough of beyond your design, to be able to at least make... Warrant a decision. Yeah, yeah. which I think is fair enough, because they'd done half the set. You could clearly see the, like, the crowd reaction and involvement and the yeah. sound that they got. And I suppose, it's kind of like logistically and time-wise, it might not have been possible to fit it back in anyway. No, because you don't know if the venue's available, the bands have all got to be available. Yeah. They'd have to get people back in to watch, to be available. What do you do about tickets? Exactly. Because people have already paid for this. Do you, does mm. that mean you have to put a second show on for free? Exactly. Because then you're losing money or... Yeah, do you have people to pay again? Yeah, in retrospect, I don't think it would have been viable to redo it. No. So that was quite an evening. It's, yeah, it's a different one. I've been evacuated from many events due to a fire alarm, but never a gig. First one for me, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I say events, buildings, yeah. cinemas, etc. I've done so. That's another one I've ticked off. So that was metal to the masses final for Nottingham, and unfortunately, because of the issues we said, Dripfed Empire didn't get to do their headline set. No, which I was gutted about because I was looking forward to seeing them as much as, as I was to seeing all the competing bands. Yeah, we've seen them before. We saw them last year at Mangala, didn't we? Yeah. And they were absolutely amazing there. And yeah, it was a shame we couldn't see that. Yeah. So, I mean, we did see them 
as people, but we didn't get to see them play. So. Yeah, I didn't get to see them play again. But I'm sure we will at some point soon, hopefully. And then I suppose we should announce the results. Yeah. So the band going through to play the new Blood Stage at Bloodstock, representing Nottingham beyond your design. I kind of expected that was going to happen, mm, yeah. I'll be honest. I, I just had a feeling that they were going to win. Yeah, I think I did as well, just based on previous performance and just... Because part of the judging criteria is kind of Audience crowd size. response, crowd participation yeah. and all of that. Like we said, they got a big crowd. I'm glad I didn't have to vote on this one. It was all judge-based as it is for the finals, isn't it? So Who would have been... If you had to pick, like, two to go through? Oh, I can't. The four? yeah. I'd find that really difficult. I would go for Buried by My Heartache just because genuine fan of yeah, them. Yeah, we are fans, yeah. Long term. But from the others, because they were so different and I enjoy them all for different reasons, I would mm. really struggle to pick a second one. Okay. Yeah, I'd have gone for Dead Demons as my yeah. other choice. So I would have gone Buried by My Heartache and Dead Demons. Mm. Interestingly, we didn't, neither of us kind of nailed down the winner, but we both suspected the winner was going to be yeah. the winner. So they get a great opportunity now to play on the new Blood stage this year at Bloodstock. Yeah, so that'll be awesome for them. Whether any of the others, I don't know, don't think they've announced a runner-up, but I know in previous years, bands who didn't win have still gone on and played the Jaeger stage like Sinkalima did last year. So we may see one of the other bands at least making an appearance at Bloodstock, I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, all four bands played really well on the night. And obviously they've come so far through a lot of other bands, would be 48, I think we worked out from yeah. the eight, so... That in yeah. itself is an achievement, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the thing to kind of bear in mind. It's like, although it's disappointing for the bands to have made it that far, but not won the, you know, mm. not won the competition, the fact they've made it through right to this point, and the quads, like we've said all the way through, the quality of the bands has been mm. exceptional. So to, yeah. to get to the final four in Nottingham is, is an absolute achievement. Yeah, and obviously they've picked up new fans along the way as well, so... Yeah, hopefully everybody um, everybody will get a bigger kind of fan base, more support, and hopefully we'll get to see them around touring at different venues, either across Nottingham or kind of through the UK. Yeah. So that's the end of this week's episode then. Hope you enjoyed listening to it. If you did, please give us a like and a share on your preferred podcast. Podcast? Podcast. <laughs> on your preferred podcast platform and a review would be lovely as well. If you're not already following us on our social media platforms, please do that as well. We would love it if you give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter at Ready to Mosh Cast and on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook and Threads. I think that one's Ready to Mosh. The others are. <laughs> well, Instagram and Threads are linked, aren't they? So TikTok, Facebook and YouTube are Ready to Mosh. Threads is Ready to Mosh or Ready to Mosh Cast. Search for Ready to Mosh, you'll find us. It's linked from our Instagram. It's all new. We don't know what we're doing on there, but who does? But give us a follow on there as well. Why not? And we'll be back next time with another episode. Make it stop raining, Moog.